there seems to be no end to the wildfires in Alberta, Canada. According to the latest tally, the flames have spread across more than 250,000 acres of land. And as the fire rages on, thousands of evacuees continue to be on the move, guided through the danger zones by emergency personnel. RT's Alex Mihailovich is in Toronto with more on the story. So Alex, we are hearing that massive convoys of evacuees are heading uh, down the highway from Fort uh, McMurray areas. Um, what can you tell us about that? You know, it's interesting. A lot of the people, when they left Fort McMurray, 88,000 escaped to Fort McMurray. 25,000 of those actually headed north and not south towards Edmonton or Calgary, which are much more highly populated cities. They actually went up to oil sands work camps where the oil companies up there house them in tents and uh, in, in their um, barracks, etc., that they have up there. So that's 25,000 people that were stuck in the north there and now trying to get south. So 7,000 of those people were airlifted last night. Another 5,500 are expected to get out of there today via air. Every one of our, or many of those camps, I should say, for the, from the oil companies do have their own runways so planes can get in. But there's also a convoy of 1,500 cars heading south through Fort McMurray, which was hit very, very hard by the fire. We hear that 1,600 buildings and houses were burnt down there. So they're heading south through Fort McMurray and then on their way to Edmonton and Calgary. Now they're being escorted by the Royal Canadian Mount Mounted Police. There's also choppers up in the air to make sure that this massive fire doesn't come anywhere close to Highway 63, the only escape route out from that area. Now these people are going to be the first witnesses to what happened in Fort McMurray. So they're going to be seeing a lot of damage and it's going to be a, a very difficult thing to see for them. But uh, you know they're, they're getting out of there and what the cops are doing is basically taking groups of 50 and they're escorting them to a certain area where they're uh, describing as a safe zone, so it's away from the fires, and then they're just letting them continue on south from there. So, like I said, 1,500 vehicles, that's a lot of vehicles uh, expected to move through that area today. And what we do have uh, is our people witnessing this, and we actually have somebody online, and that would be Brandy LaDuc, if she's from that area. She described something to me, we had a conversation, which was very interesting. She said that uh, it seemed apocalyptic. Now, Brandy, are you there? Hello. Brandy, you said to me, you know, what you saw was apocalyptic in Fort McMurray. What did you see? Um, absolutely. Uh, I don't know. I went to work that day and um, I walked out into the lunchroom after, like during work and everyone was running around looking for a ride to get into town because we had heard that the uh, fire had jumped across the river to where most of the residential area was. And, uh, yeah, so driving into town, it was bumper to bumper and got into town there and couldn't get up one of the routes that I needed to get up to to get to my house. So I had to be rerouted and um, so finally got up there after battling through traffic and uh, grabbed my few things that I thought I needed. Um, and then I uh, hit the road with my cousin and his girlfriend. And again, it was just gridlocked, um, bumper to bumper. We were heading um, towards Parsons Creek, but there was no way we were getting out that way. There was um, horses walking down the sidewalk. There was people riding their dirt bikes and crotch rockets all over the place. And uh, so we eventually were able to get to an area where we could kind of go over the curb and swoop back around to another exit there. And uh, took us about 20 minutes to get to that location and then another hour and a half to get to the edge of town. So normally a drive that would take me 20 minutes from my house to um, the edge of town took us a couple hours. You know, I'm going to ask you a personal question. In a situation like that, when you're you're basically scrounging to grab stuff, what do you grab? What do you take out of your house? What is the most important to you? Thinking that your house might be burnt down within hours. That was the thing. It's like you don't know, are you going to be gone a day? Are you going to be gone a month? And it was conveniently because um, on Sunday was when the fires kind of broke out. I had had a bag packed and ready to go because that day um, there was helicopters like flying overhead like crazy. So I had gone out my back porch 
and there was fire to the left of me, fire to the right of me, well, smoke, and there was planes flying everywhere, so, and then the police came down our street, barricaded it, went door to door, told us, you guys need to be ready to evacuate, so it was convenient that I had kind of had stuff together, but I, I was in there, and I was just like, the most important thing to me was my animals, um, things can be replaced. You, you have insurance to cover your stuff, really. But my animals were my number one. <laughs> well, I can imagine. You grab your pets and you get out of there and, of course, uh, your loved ones. Let me just ask you very quickly, where are you now? Uh, I'm in Cranbrook, British Columbia. Which is where my okay, family so you're, you're out of there safely. That's great to hear and uh, all the best to you, Brandy. Thank you. Now, what's interesting here, what we're hearing from these sites, is who's helping out? And there are people from all over Canada donating money. We have uh, hundreds of firefighters coming from all over the nation. But one interesting story is a refugee family from Syria is in on the action. Uh, they're saying, you know, they understand what the people of Fort McMurray are going through because they went through something very similar in Syria. And now they want to give back to the country that's given so much to them. So these are new Canadians in, in helping out just like Canadians would. Back to you, Manila. Alex, that's amazing with the tens of thousands of people and all this chaos, all these people are getting out safely. That was RT's Alex Mihailovich reporting from Toronto.